Warm welcome to today's talk, Wednesday the 15th of November. Now we're looking at information today from the United States, from the life insurance industry, that shows deaths in young adults in 2023 so far are 20% above what we would expect. So quite a high increase, and they do use quite strong words like the numbers are alarming, and I'll put the link to the uh, the news outlet in the description. So this has somewhat caught the insurance industry off guard, and of course these guys are interested because um, it costs them a lot of money. Uh, the, the insurance payouts are higher than they uh, would want, because it is an industry, and I'm not knocking that life insurance is necessary. Um just to give you some examples here, 15 to 19 year olds, the percentage difference from 2019, well, a little lower, well, about 1% in 2018, 1%, but that's just fluctuation. Okay, we could argue about the pandemic and being a little higher, but, but uh, January to May in 2023, 20, 24% increase. 30 to 34 year old age group, Again, uh, the difference from 2019 and again, January to May, 23% increase so far for 2023. It's persisting. 40 to 44 year olds percentage difference. Again, 2023 so far, January to May data, uh, 25% increase. And it just seems incredible to me that this is not uh, at the top of the political agenda and the mainstream news agenda. Now, the article doesn't give too much extra information, but causes of death show increasing cardiac mortality in all ages. COVID-related causes declined in 2022 and, of course, are now low in 2023, thankfully. Others rose, particularly stroke, diabetes, kidney and liver disease. And concerningly, the Society of Actuaries polled. They, they seem to think that this is going to increase or carry up. The death rates are going to be higher in 2025 and 2026. So quite an overall pessimistic picture, really, from American life insurers there. Now, I'm going to go on and give some detail from uh, two sites in the UK. This is the uh, Office for Health Improvements and Disparities, and then we'll look at something from our world in data. And again, we see that the increase in deaths is across... All, all the age groups. So this first slide is excess mortality in England by age, and the age here is 0 to 24. The zero line is along there. Dark is less deaths than we would expect. The lighter blue above the line is more deaths than we would expect. And we see that they've been higher in 2022 and into 2023 20, uh, significantly more light blue above the line than dark blue below the line. Uh, we see it in the 25 to 49 year old age range. Again, really quite stark. Very few weeks here where the numbers are below what we would expect. This is the uh, 50 to 64 year old age range. And again, um, virtually no months where it's below average there. This is the 65 to 74 year old age range, again, above average typically. And there we see it mostly above average also in 2023 in the 75 to 84 year old age range. And this is the older age group, 85 plus. So we see that the increase in deaths is in all age groups above what we would expect. Now, um, the Office for Health Improvements does give some information which is remarkably useful as well on causes of death. Now, here we see ischemic heart disease. And we notice that deaths from ischemic heart disease are higher in 2022 and 2023. Uh, these are cerebrovascular disease, so things like strokes. Again, we see higher than average. So we're seeing circulatory diseases here. This is chronic uh, lower respiratory disease. Now, we actually see here that the numbers are less than expected, which um, is, is good. Um, so we're seeing more deaths from cardiovascular disease, but uh, less deaths from chronic respiratory disease. And given that we've just come out of a COVID 
respiratory pandemic. That is a bit surprising, really. Um, now, this is um, heart failure. Well, in heart failure, it's uh, a significant increase in the amount of deaths from uh, that we're seeing from heart failure. Um, very much higher, 2022, 2023. Heart failure is just where the, the myocardium, the, the, the pumping muscle of the heart, basically stops working effectively and can't generate sufficient cardiac output to meet the metabolic demands of the body, often with a backlog of fluid into the into the circulation as well. Um, that's heart. This is uh, other respiratory diseases. That's this classification. And again, we see many lower than we would uh, expect, much lower than we would expect. Um, this is uh, acute respiratory infections slightly higher than we would expect. Alzheimer's disease, uh, less than we would expect. Now, this isn't really surprising because, sadly, a lot of old people have died um, during the pandemic, so that's not entirely surprising. And uh, We could talk about why they died, but the fact is they've got less old people who are sadly no longer with us. Um this is cirrhosis and liver disease, a dramatic increase on the averages we would expect. Cirrhosis basically is the formation of scar tissue in the, in the liver, but those rates are much higher than we would expect. Now, I want to look at the international situation now, because this is not just the UK and the United States. And we'll look at the usual countries there we, where we normally look at this. This is Australia. So 2021... 2022 and into 2023 let's hope this decline in australia is is real um but it's still around about six percent but it has been as we see as high as 20 percent excess deaths in uh 2023 in australia canada likewise at the moment um, excess mortality deaths from all causes compared to average over previous years in canada we see it's currently over 15 percent Figures for Ireland, again, over 10% at the moment, at the present time, and has been higher in 2022 and 2023. Netherlands, somewhat above average, again, latest data there is actually over 20% um, in Netherlands. New Zealand, it's been higher in 2022, 2023. Looks like it's down to about 4% now, but it's been higher in 2023. This is the latest data that we have. United Kingdom um, looks like we're around about seven or eight percent there on that on that our world in data graphic. And the United States, well, it, it hasn't dropped below average for some time, has it? Not since the fifth of January twenty twenty by this data set, and uh, higher in twenty twenty two and twenty twenty three. So sadly, we're seeing these increased deaths around the world. And uh, as far as we know, we've, well, we've looked at data from the UK and the United States that these are in uh, basically all age groups. It's across the age ranges that we're seeing this. Very surprising that we're not seeing and hearing more about this from our politicians and uh, mainstream and media. Now, just before we go, um, if you want to get more on the normal function of the body and how the body goes wrong. These books are available for free download. I will put the link there, the books I've written. And this one, there's a copies available in hard copy if you live in the United Kingdom. This one, um, I'm just getting around to updating it. It's just a matter of time. <laughs> Hopefully we'll, we'll reprint that as well. But there's a lot of detail there on, on the way that the body works and the way the body goes wrong, completely free. On, on PDF, so free for you to download that and use it as you would like. And um, thank you for watching, and let's hope we, well, to be honest, we haven't heard much on these excess deaths from where we would expect to hear about it, and uh, I do hope that changes, but at least you've seen the data for yourself now. And we really need to be asking questions about this. But... Um, we don't seem to be getting many answers. Thank you for watching.